For Hype Plus, I'm Terrence Sims. The interconnected plots of the hit FX series Snowfall illustrates not only its main character Franklin's rise from a young weed dealer to one of LA's most notorious kingpins, but also the involvement of the international drug cartels and the federal government. The show follows Franklin, played by Damson Idris, as he learns how to turn cocaine into crack when it was first introduced in the 80s and the impact it had on his South Central Los Angeles neighborhood. We also meet characters like Gustavo, a Mexican wrestler with ties to a major drug ring, Teddy, a disgraced CIA operative trying to redeem himself, and Lucia, the daughter of a Mexican crime lord with aspirations to take over the game herself. Although the stories are fictional, they portray some real life events and make references to real people and real situations. Drugs impacted the nation so deeply that we still feel the effects of it to this day. Snowfall creator John Singleton, who directed classics like Boys in the Hood and Higher Learning, is known to shed light on true topics that affect the black community through his work. Snowfall is no different. Singleton pulled from his real life experience growing up in South Central LA to tell a deeper story about his hometown and America in general. Snowfall writers consulted with advisors like Los Angeles poet Lorette Luis J. Rodriguez, who was a former gang member and drug user in the 60s and 70s, who could give their stories the utmost authenticity regarding drugs and its connection to the government and society as a whole. Here's what's true about Snowfall. Franklin Saint is based on Freeway Rick Ross. Possibly true. And no, we do not mean the Maybach music rapper Rick Ross. He got his name from the actual Ricky Donnell Freeway Rick Ross, the author and former drug trafficker, most known for the multi-million dollar drug empire he started in Los Angeles in the 1980s. It is widely speculated and even claimed by Rick Ross himself that it is his real life story that Snowfall's main character Franklin Saint is based on. Freeway Rick appeared on Laura Jamar's Yana the Mean Godcast and spoke briefly about Snowfall. He shared, Me and John Singleton was working together. He was helping me put my script together. He was supposed to be a director of my movie. He disappeared and all of a sudden, Snowfall came out. He added, I was very disappointed in John. I thought that he was different. Much like Franklin, Rick Ross got into dealing cocaine at a young age and became very good at it, very fast. During the peak of his cocaine career, it has been said that he would bring in up to much as $3 million a day. Also like Franklin, Ricky invested his profits into real estate as a way to clean up his drug money and eventually get out of the game. From season three into the current season of the show, we see Franklin gradually come up in the real estate business. He now has his own company, multiple properties, and his own very large home. Freeway Rick got his nickname from owning properties along Los Angeles Interstate 110, also known as the Harbor Freeway. Admittedly, Ricky did not watch the first four seasons of Snowfall due to the feeling like the show was a sign of disloyalty from John Singleton. It wasn't until the start of his podcast, After the Snow, with co-host David Mays, that he would start watching season five of the show and confirm any similarities to his life. In season five of Snowfall, we see Franklin and his crew really enjoy the fruits of what they built the past three years, including Franklin's aunt and uncle Louie and Jerome buying horses for their leisure. Rick did confirm that his friends also own horses. We also see Franklin has earned his pilot license, now flies himself to and from Central America to pick up his drug supply. Ross was also learning how to fly planes with the aspirations to buy his own plane. The crack epidemic, very true. While cocaine was the main drug of interest in the 1980s, the market for drugs saw a huge drop due to the oversaturation paving the way for crack industry. Crack became popular because of its affordability, the immediate euphoric high it provided, and how much money could be made from it. It was made by turning the powder form of cocaine into a smokable rock that could be sold in a smaller portions to more people. In the first episodes of Snowfall, in 1983, we see Franklin go from selling weed to his introduction to cocaine. Later in the first season, he meets the Connect, who shows him how to turn cocaine into crack. The crack game made a lot of black people a lot of money, but not without causing the demise of black communities across the nation. John Singleton recalled his experience to The Guardian. I remember friends who never had any money starting to have money. He says, it was like, okay, that's where it's coming from. I'll never forget seeing kids I knew who used to play ball with us, shaking down grown people for money they owed for drugs. Seeing a kid just nine or 10 kicking a grown man in the leg saying, motherfucker, you better give me my money. It was surreal. 
In a testimony given during a 1987 congressional hearing called to address how the government responded to the growing issues of crack cocaine called crack cocaine crisis, commanding officer Joel Gilliam posed the question. How do we tell a young kid to stay in school and work at Burger King for $3 an hour when he can make $250 a day selling crack? The high from this drug was so powerful that it had people willing to do anything for money for their next fix. The high was instant and it was very intense, causing users to constantly crave more. According to the National Board of Medical Examiners, the total number of cocaine users increased from 4.3 million in 1982 to 6 million in 1985, which is just after crack hit the streets. The increase in demand for this little white rock caused much tension between drug dealers as they fought over territory and profit from the same customers. A report issued by the Children's Defense Fund states that the homicide rate for young black males more than doubled between 1984 and 1989. The drug destroyed black families. Many young black people were left to fend for themselves while their parents succumbed to their vices. Thus, an increase in black children in foster care. Many babies were conceived to crack addicts causing an increase in fetal death rates and low birth weight babies. The third season of Snowfall opens with a glimpse of the damage that crack cocaine has caused in Franklin's neighborhood. Singleton told Deadline, if you went to South Central before the crack epidemic, there weren't any bars on windows, there were less fences. A reference to the crime and violence that took over the city once crack was introduced. During the crack cocaine crisis hearing, Inspector Gilliam stated that according to the National Institute of Justice, one quarter or more of homicides, 75% of all robberies and 50% of all felony assaults were committed by pill or cocaine or heroin users. He added, there is a clear statement made when you drive down the street and you see bars on the windows and doors and homes and attack dogs in every yard. The epidemic only slowed when the later generations discovered they did not want to experience the detriment that crack caused our world. The CIA involvement in distributing cocaine. Allegedly true. Before flying those planes himself to Central America to pick up his cocaine supply, Franklin was flown by his supplier, Teddy McDonald, the CIA agent. It may seem like a dramatized situation for TV, but it is widely accepted as the fact that the United States Central Intelligence Agency was involved in a Nicaraguan country's cocaine trafficking operations during the 1980s to help supply weapons during the Nicaraguan Civil War. A later retracted series of stories from the San Jose Mercury News in 1995 brought these facts to the forefront through interviews with Rick Ross and his suppliers and through investigations of the government's involvement. Freeway Rick has stated that his supply of cocaine was ultimately coming from the CIA by the way of Nicaraguan exile Danilo Blandin, who was on the CIA's payroll. This article led to multiple federal investigations, including an investigation by the CIA. That's right, the CIA was set to investigate the CIA, all of which concluded there was no evidence of a conspiracy by the CIA officials or its employees to bring drugs into the United States. However, in the CIA report, it was also found that CIA assets had in fact been trafficking narcotics to fund the Contra rebels. The agency was aware of this trafficking, and in some cases, dissuaded the DEA, the other agencies from the investigating the Contra supply networks involved. Freeway Rick received his third strike and a life sentence after purchasing cocaine from a federal agent in a sting operation. While serving his time, he met Gary Webb, the author of the infamous series that outed the CIA called Dark Alliance, published by Mercury News. Irene Abe is based on Gary Webb. Probably true. It is possible that the character Irene Abe, a pushy journalist played by Susie Nakamura, is based on Gary Webb. Gary was an award-winning investigative journalist who was known for his three-part series, Dark Alliance, which exposed the CIA's involvement in drug trafficking in the United States. In the show, Irene is set on revealing Franklin's ties to the CIA with the intention of bringing down the major players of the operation. Both the real-life and TV journalists were very headstrong and stood firm in their findings. Once Webb's article was published, it sent the media and the government into a frenzy. California residents and government officials expressed outrage and findings the destruction crack cocaine caused in its urban areas was an inside job. All those officials, then U.S. Representative Maxine Waters, pointed to Webb's articles as proof of a mastermind plot to destroy inner city black America. She was one of his biggest supporters. Later, the media began to discredit Webb's research and series was retracted by Mercury News. In 2004, Gary Webb was found dead in his home by two gunshots to the head. His death was ruled a suicide. 
In Snowfall, the CIA agent Teddy actually kills Irene Aid himself after her story is published and his cover is blown. He stages her death to look like a drunk driving car accident. Snowfall executive producer and writer Leonard Chang revealed to TV Line that Irene is loosely based on the infamous reporter and in regards to her death in the show, like, well, she got too close. Season five of Snowfall is set in 1986, where Franklin Saint and his family have become rich beyond their dreams and have almost everything they've ever wanted. But as crack becomes a national topic and labeled as an epidemic, the risk begins to outweigh the reward. The government and law enforcement began to really crack down on crack cocaine during this time. Season five opens portraying the true story of the death of college basketball star Lynn Bias from cocaine intoxication two days after he was drafted to the Boston Celtics. Although he was not smoking crack cocaine, the media labeled it as so, furthering law enforcement's mission to eradicate the drug and those who sell it. The opening of season five introduces us to the show's depiction of the crash unit of the Los Angeles Police Department, led by a fictional detective Buckley played by actor Brandon J. McLaren. Detective Buckley is involved in Franklin's drug business, and we also see him lead a corrupt operation that shows his team violently raiding the home of an innocent family with little remorse. The crash unit was indeed an actual task force started by the LAPD. It stands for Community Resources Against Street Hoodlums. It was created in 1979 to combat gang and drug related crimes and was the subject of major corruption and scandal. The actions of Buckley and his team of police officers is thoroughly based on real life events. Following the gang related drive-by shooting in South Central in 1987, then Chief of Police Daryl F. Gates began a crash initiative called Operation Hammer which aimed to further control to the city by introducing officers to arrest suspected gang members. Operation Hammer led to mass arrests of mainly black and Hispanic individuals, which brought up accusations of racism against LAPD. In 1988, the LAPD arrested over 1,400 people in one weekend through Operation Hammer. The arrest only led to 103 criminal charges, some as small as simply loitering. The lawlessness of Crash Unit portrayed in Snowfall was just the tip of the iceberg of things to come in reality. An investigation based mainly on statements and admitted corrupt Crash Officer Rafael Perez led to the uncovering of various forms of misconduct by other Crash Officers including unprovoked shootings, unprovoked beatings, planning of false evidence, stealing and dealing narcotics, and even bank robbery. The wrongdoings of these offers led to millions of dollars in lawsuits for the city of Los Angeles and the disbandment of Crash Unit. Although Snowfall is a fictional crime drama, it seems that the show encourages you to make your own judgment about our actual society through various references to real life events sprinkled around over made up stories. From watching Franklin's childhood sweetheart go from college bound to crack addict, to seeing the police become just as much as the problem as they are the solution, Snowfall tells the story of two Americas and hopefully we can learn from the truths of the past and present of our culture. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all social media and look out for our original content on our new streaming service at ComedyHype.com. For Hype Plus, I'm Terrence Sims.